This is Twit. So the the 2990WX is $1799. That's the 32 core, 64 thread part. <clears throat> Honestly, it's the one that in the build up to this launch that was the most interesting and exciting, right? It was the it was where all the rumors coming of AMD doubling the core count again from from 16 to 32. And what what nobody really realized until we started to get briefed by AMD on this is that it there's a lot of complication that goes along with it, right? There are uh, uh, complications of using the same socket and the same motherboards means that even though you have four dies with four separate memory controllers, you can only access two of them. Even though right. all four dies have access to PCI Express lanes, you only can access two sets of those. Uh, unlike where these 32 core processors exist in the Epic platform, you know, they have eight channel memory support, 128 lanes of PCIe support. Uh, the Threadripper versions have about half that. But maybe more problematic for the part is that when you start to branch outside of the truly multi thread capable, truly like workstation class applications, your, your, your offline rendering, mm -hmm. your ray tracing, your uh, video production, stuff like that. You start to find a lot of instances where the processor actually is going to run slower than the 16 mm -hmm. core part, uh, like gaming, for example, even in some um, older uh, handbrake encoders, right? If you're just doing a single instance of those applications. And the reason is that the, because two of the, Two sets of eight cores, right? Remember, there's four separate die on these parts. Um, two of those don't have access to memory. They don't have access to PCIe off of their own uh, silicon. So right. they have to hop across to the other one. And when you have threads that are, you know, some threads that maybe the Windows scheduler isn't intelligently placing and, and they're, you know, maybe a, it, the worst case scenario is you've got a, a core that has no memory trying to talk with a thread with the other core that has no memory and they both have to go to separate cores in order for these uh, for the data to copy over and transmit and communicate. So there, there are instances where that happens. I don't think that makes the 2990 WX a bad part. It just means mm -hmm. that you need to be more deliberate about what you're buying it for. Uh, right. if, you're, if you're an enthusiast and you love the idea of having 32 cores, but really you're doing gaming most of the time and, and, and some moderate prosumer workloads, you probably don't want to go down that route just because every time you game, if you want the best experience possible for the gaming uh, uh, scenarios, you're going to have to uh, enter into game mode, which is something the previous, the first gen Threadripper have, but that essentially disables half your cores or disables three quarters of your cores, puts you into an eight or 16 core system, which removes a lot of those uh, uh, bottlenecks or potential problems in performance, but it does mean mm -hmm. you have to reboot machine to get into that mode. And then if you're going to do work again and you want access to all 64 threads, you reboot again. Um, and then I can imagine some scenarios if you're lazy like me, where you'd be like, yeah, this project's only going to take 20 minutes to render anyway. I'll just leave it in 16 core mode. <laughs> so I don't have to close all these apps and reboot. You, you kind of lose some of the, some of the benefit there. So the, the W in that brand of the 2990 WX is mm -hmm. I think more important than AMD emphasized, right? Like the Threadripper brand right. at the beginning, it's called Ryzen, it's called Threadripper. Maybe this should have been called something like Epic W, like for Epic Workstation, uh, and it would have gotten more of that uh, emphasis placed I mean, on the branding. they could have named it the 2900 or the 2990 workstation processor that's going to create problems for you in certain workloads if you're a consumer that just wanted to spend all the money. But... That was yep. tough to fit on the box. Um. <laughs> yep, yep. And on, on the other side, the 2950X, which is the 16-core part, the analog to the 1950X, uh, is now 899 so it's 100 bucks less uh, of starting MSRP. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can get the 1950X for below that now. Um, it's 16 cores, 32 threads, higher clock speeds, but beyond just higher clock speeds uh, by a couple hundred megahertz, it has Precision Boost 2. It has all the Zen Plus design changes and precision boost 2 is actually more valuable to the 2950 than it is to the 2700x because basically the old version of precision boost was if you're using one or two cores the clock speed just kind of was at its near its top speed and as soon as you went to like three four five cores the clocks dropped pretty 
pretty quickly. Uh, there was a pretty high or steep shelf there. Now it's a much more gradual change. So, you know, if you're if you're using eight, ten threads throughout your system, you can expect higher average clock speeds than you would have otherwise. The latency improvements that you got with the Zen Plus are carried over to this, and it it does. There are many instances in which the 2950X 16 core part from AMD is now matching or near matching and in a couple of cases better than the 7980XE from Intel, which is the 18 core part um, Skylake X. No. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, but, but it does that even though, you know, we know that the inherent IPC advantages belong, belong to Intel in that space. And right. that 7980XE is still like $2,000 part. So uh, I, I still think that the second gen Threadripper launch is good. Like these are good products, uh, but I think there's mm -hmm. a little bit more confusion and a there needs to be a little bit more deliberate discussion about the difference between the X series and the WX series than maybe we right. had we thought we were going to have to have. At some level, is there going to need to be optimization in some applications to take advantage of this this uh, excess of cores, if you will? Um, because I mean, when it's really going to be at the OS level. Yeah, that's what I'm. Or at the, at the so it's more the OS than the actual applications themselves. Yeah, I mean, so so here's the thing. Like the the AMD tried to make this as good as possible. So if you look at the 2990, it's it's separated into four NUMA nodes, right? So mm -hmm. four different memory segments. And in theory, Windows should uh, should only should place threads on the cores that have access to memory first. So they they put those, you know, that's node zero and node one uh, before it goes into node two and three that ha don't have access to memory. Um, it doesn't work perfectly in Windows 10 today. It may work a little bit better in Windows Server than it does in Windows 10. Right. The, but th there's still a lot of room for fixes in that. There's still a lot of room to optimize. There's room to um, you know, give the operating system a little bit more of a peek inside the architecture so it knows these types of things. I could also imagine um, what I would like to see is for for some applications, say the operating system doesn't really change, and the applications, um, some of them can be complicated, like say games, for example, right? Like, you know, games mm -hmm. are going to create a whole bunch of threads. They may not uh, be aware enough to say, make sure I'm always on the same NUMA node or what have you. The right. If there was a piece of software that you could, you know, it, this is an extra step that you don't want to have to do, but as like kind of an interim step, if you open up this piece of software and say, every time I start Far Cry 5, it only has access to these eight cores. Right. If you could do that and have it have it automatically set the affinity of that application that way, that would help a lot. Uh, and I think and it's something AMD is aware of, but I think it's just a really complex software problem to solve uh, when you're not the developer of the OS and or all of those applications that you're trying to fix. All you have to do is fix everything yeah. everywhere simultaneously <laughs> before For it everybody ships. else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's interesting to look at, the, at some of the benchmarks where... You know, it goes from having this staggering lead, um, you know, it, you know, POV rate 3.7.0, um, where it's not quite, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, not quite twice as fast as a Core i9 7980XE, but it's, you know, in the neighborhood. Um, and then you keep scrolling down, like, you know, uh, in Blender, lower is better, and POV Ray, uh, larger is better. And, you know, that's a pretty significant lead. Uh, you know, and then you get to sort of, you know, X264 benchmark, uh, X264 benchmark 5.0.1, and the Threadripper 2950X is actually outperforming the Threadripper 2990WX, um, despite having half the number of cores. And it's a really interesting, like, oh, oh, there are issues yeah. there. How thrilling. Mm -hmm. Um you know, is was gaming just kind of silly to do on this? Was there any point? I mean, because I, I, most games are still like, I still feel like a quad core game is kind of like something to celebrate, um, which is not, <laughs> you know, a, a, last year probably a quad core game was something to celebrate. I think they're becoming yeah. more common now, but, um, you know, uh, it was, was it just a ridiculous tool for gaming? I mean, it, it, <sighs> The 2950X was still was still better, right? The 20 there are some games where the 2990 and you'll see for the 2990WX there's two data points. There's the default, uh, and then there's the gaming mode where we took it down to eight cores. And in some instances, like Wildlands, there 
Uh, if you remember back to the original Threadripper launch, there were some games that right. just wouldn't start if you had too many threads. Wildlands is right. one of those. It works now with a 16 core, doesn't work with the 32 core. So, you know, still <laughs> a little bit more modifications to go. There are some games with the 2990 and the 2950 <laughs> are neck and neck. There are some where right. without the gaming mode enabled, the 2990 is, you know, half the speed or significantly slower. And that's all because of the the latency issues that come up across right. threads that aren't on the same Newman node trying trying to communicate. So yeah, GTA Hardwood. 5 is, is one of those examples, right? So you can see the 2990 only pulls in 45 frames per second, but when you turn on game mode, that jumps up to 94, uh, right. which is obviously a huge difference. Uh, you don't part have to worry about that as much with the 2950. Part of this makes me laugh is this is such an example of, you know, there are games that really aren't CPU bound and Boy, what a demonstration, uh, especially like Civilization VI, um, <laughs> where, where obviously CPU power is not the challenge there. I mean, it's, you know, technically the, the Threadrippers uh, were faster, but you're still talking about a variation from 12.8 on a Ryzen 7 2700X uh, up to 14.9 uh, frames per second. Um that's not a huge delta given the price difference in the range of parts on that screen. Um, more so on the GPU side of things. But it's, you know, uh, I, I've never actually had a chance to say horses for courses out loud on a podcast ever. <laughs> so you heard it here first, but this is really, you know, this is not the horse for that course. Um, you know, gaming is an afterthought on this. Uh, you know, a well, actually a well thought out afterthought on this given that they put the gaming mode in there but um yeah i also love the uh uh if you go to the the last page the overclocking section the software um <laughs> where it's showing the the ryzen master overclocking software in place keep scrolling keep scrolling there it is click on that one you know in case you're wondering what a visual uh, look at 32 <laughs> course looks like yeah it's a little bit of data overload, huh? Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. That's just a lot of cores, people. I, I you know, I, 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 thumbs up. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it didn't win the, it's, it, it's funny because like the 2950X uh, got an editor's choice. The 2990WX got a, a silver award. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I think if, you know, you know who you are. Uh, if you need right. a 2990 WX, uh, and if you aren't thinking like this will solve this problem in my office and I will be able to take lunch breaks once again and leave <laughs> before midnight, <laughs> right. that's your point. Yep. Um, if you're thinking like Warcraft would be totally bitching on this, it is not your part. Uh, and yep. you should donate that money to a, a worthy charity. Um, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Yep. Will you be buying a uh, 2990WX for use in the office? Um, that was a big sigh. I don't, I don't know. It, pro, I mean, so I, I, honestly, the, the software we use, Adobe, doesn't utilize it as well as it should, right? right. And that, that's a reason why we switched from a two-socket Xeon server to a one-socket 18-core 7980XE when we did. Um mm -hmm. It, it doesn't do as well with the Numa node problems, which is which are the right. same problems that exist when you switch when you go to multi socket configurations too. So um, I want to see some more software optimization on that side. Uh, but you know, I think a twenty nine fifty x would probably be something that I would consider putting in there because it, you can put it on one Numa mode, new one node, uh, unified memory address space, and then it has higher clock speeds and all the latency efficiency improvements to go along with it. That's probably where I'd go.